Hi, I'm John Rail, and this is the Rogue News, brought to you by our bosses at patreon.com slash modern rogue. The breathtaking natural beauty of Australia is pretty famously known for trying to murder everyone at every opportunity, and their freeways are no exception. While driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour in Queensland last month, a man known as Jimmy, I think that's a surname in Australia, found himself face to face or leg to snake. The point is, there was a super venomous eastern brown snake on the floor of his car trying to wrap around his leg and bite him. He understandably panicked and started driving erratically, but also managed to pull out a knife to defend himself and stab the snake to death. In the meantime, an officer pulled him over for speeding, and while anywhere else in the world, snake in my car sounds crazy, in Australia, the officer just said, yeah, so? No. He called the paramedics and made sure Jimmy was just fine. When you're out on a lake, there are times when you may see things like, say, a big fluffy ball of animal fall off a cliff and into the water. Is this the thing you'll see? Wait, where's Dwayne going sailing? Under normal circumstances... Where balls of animals fall off a cliff, yeah. Yes. Under those circumstances, advice would not include immediately leaping into the water and swimming toward the animal as fast as you can. Mm. But on July 11th at Lake Pleasant in Arizona, Desiree Blanco did just that. She assumed it was an animal in distress and went after it. Turns out, a young Cooper's hawk had fallen in and was struggling to stay afloat. So Blanco used a pool noodle to bring it closer, and the bird actually grabbed onto her arm for safety. The Arizona Game and Fish Department hopes to be able to release the bird back into the wild. And everyone hopes to have Blanco around to investigate strange and unknown things like big fluffy balls of animal. Ah, you see, he set us up for the payoff. Did you catch that, Bryce? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Say what you will about those self-defense classes at community centers, like that they're a much better use of time and money than most dojos run by sociopathic egomaniacs. Yeah, I'll say that. But 71-year-old Kay Parrish from London, England swears by the one she attends as part of the Barking and Dagenham Council's Young at Heart program. Last month, a man posing as a volunteer who was handing out free hand sanitizer actually forced his way into Parrish's home demanding money. But that's when Parrish said she remembered her classes and quote, this slap our teacher taught us where it wobbles the brain and makes the person disoriented. So I did that and he looked shocked but screamed about money again. So she smacked him again while shouting, go away, bad guy. She did not. You don't know that. <laughs> After the second slap, he took off. He is yet to be apprehended or even identified, but now maybe he'll think twice no matter what age group he's trying to rob. You may have heard that last month, after 10 long years, the Fen treasure had finally been found. If you don't know what the Fen treasure is, it's a chest of gold and jewels that a man named Forrest Fen of Santa Fe, New Mexico had supposedly hidden in the Rocky Mountains for a modern day treasure hunt. It's a neat story and one many people were understandably skeptical about. Well, in June of this year, someone allegedly found it and the anonymous individual verified the findings with Fen, who confirmed and announced its discovery. But now, father and son, Chris and Christopher Hurst, are claiming that they actually found the location of the treasure first, told Fenn about it, but then Fenn was like, oh no, no, there's some anonymous guy that actually found it before you did. So maybe the experience was the treasure all along? An experience that, by the way, um, at least five other people have died looking for. Good punch out, John. Thank you. Earlier this month in Keene, New Hampshire, a routine question about shipping a package saved an elderly woman from losing $19,000. When the owner of Shipping Shack, Brenda Ballou, asked the woman the standard, what are you shipping question, the woman just told her, cash. But it wasn't a crisp fiver for Junior on his birthday, it was $19,000 in cash to some jack wagon in Milwaukee. The f is a jack wagon? This jack wagon, it's kind of growing on me, told her that her social security number had been stolen and she needed to send the money to get a new one. Despite the woman's insistence that the package be sent, Bolu and her husband alerted authorities who then called this would-be scammer's number but were predictably hung up on and the number was immediately disconnected. And while maybe obvious to some, this does serve as a reminder that pretty much any time anybody asks you to send them cash in the mail for some weird or unexpected reason, Either you definitely shouldn't, or it's to this address, and you definitely should in that case. Although, save yourself the postage and just support us on Patreon, where you'll get all kinds of cool perks, like t-shirts, behind the scenes footage, guest interviews, and much, much, do you know I don't even have a Modern Rogue shirt? What? Like, 
Yeah, nobody's giving me a Modern Rogue shirt. I only had like two. I had to buy one. What? <laughs> what? In fact, the Rogue News itself is sponsored by our current bosses at patreon.com slash modern rogue. Thank you for watching. Inexperience that, by the way, um, at least five other people have died looking for. Good punch out, John. Thank you. Did, did people die to find this? Yeah. Like, several people. Why is that not in this, the story? Your family's... Several people have died to look for it.